Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Airspeed Prime here with my next Star Wars Rebels uh, video. This one is going to be my Season 3 uh, in review video. So we're going to be talking about Season 3 as a whole, all of the episodes now that it's done, and basically how was this season? Was it good? Was it bad? Or was it just somewhere in between? So overall my impressions on Season 3 are that um, certain episodes were really good, but it was a very select few. So overall, you would have to say that the season was fairly average. Um, it didn't really have a, a goal as such. Um, and while there were certainly, you know, notable moments at times, the show's problem has always been that it's never necessarily felt like it's had really big character arcs for our new characters. At times it's had bits and pieces, but they've they've never just con committed to a continuous plot necessarily. And I think as we'll get into, stuff like Ezra's arc and what they tried and didn't really hit home at all to do with him over the course of the season highlight the issues with this show. So let's uh, start by just very quickly kind of <clears throat> running down the episodes. So we started off with our kind of TV movie, episode 1 and 2, uh, Rebels Steps Into Shadow, uh, followed by Holocrons of Fate and the Antilles Extraction. And, you know, the, the first section of the show, you know, like, the, there's always a, you know, excitement around the new Rebels start uh, opening, because you know you're going to get two episodes. Um, but, you know, by episode 3, the Holocrons of Fate and, like, what they do with it, it's, it's fine, but it's nothing amazing to me in that I think reflecting on it the whole Maul arc with um, you know him coming back here the whole idea of like bringing the, the dark side and light side holocrons together and it basically giving them each half of the puzzle that they each wanted to solve like Ezra wanted to know how to defeat the Sith Maul wanted to know how to find Kenobi I, do, I just don't feel there was enough focus on Maul that the the show has this almost obsession with the fact that it has a main cast and that cast is the ghost crew and they are just afraid for some reason to give too much time to anything that is not the ghost crew and that's too often not a problem with these type of shows that okay you you want to have your main characters be the focus of course then present something interesting about them Instead of feeling the need to always introduce like another character like an Ahsoka or a Maul or an Obi-Wan to give excitement into the show and then not show them enough. That's been the show's problem basically the last two seasons. Last season it was there wasn't enough Ahsoka and while ultimately what they did with her was fine, they she just wasn't in the show enough to really you know fully get into her character because the focus was always on the rebel crew when they never did anything of note it was very similar here with maul in that you, you try to make ezra maul's apprentice kind of and he has to use them to get what he wants and <clears throat> obviously like later on in the season kind of comes back tricks them to get the idea of like where obi-wan is um and it just was this whole idea of like is Ezra going to go to the dark side or is he not? And it just didn't go anywhere because they never fully committed to Ezra being uh, <clears throat> moving over to the dark side. And this has been something they've been trying to do since almost season one of this idea that there is a darkness within Ezra and it he has the potential to sort of be like an Anakin Skywalker type character um, because of that, but him making decisions not to. Um, for me, it hasn't worked really because they've never committed to it. His entire like potential to being dark has been scattered episodes, scattered incidents that ultimately have very little like impact on his arc as a whole. So for me, Ezra this season was actually just relatively boring as a character. Hence why I, re I really heavily criticized uh, Twin Sons for his inclusion because he's our main character effectively and you have him have a pretty notable role in probably the most important episode of the season and your main character is just made to be 
not important at all. No one wanted to see that much of Ezra in that episode. Everyone just wanted Maul and Kenobi. And it speaks to the fact that they mishandled his arc. And it speaks to the fact that they didn't give enough time for Obi-Wan and Maul. But anyway, we'll move on. The first, I suppose, uh, one of our kind of no usual style middle of a season episodes, Antilles' extraction as number four was fine. You know, introducing Wedge and also Hobby into the show. But again, they didn't do anything with them. Hobby was always just going to be the other pilot that they needed. And then Wedge, they did, you know, he was in the finale for a little bit. And then we had the episode with the droids just before that. That was, you know, you know fine. He was fun. But again, like, it's... We don't really know much about him as a character necessarily. And I don't think he necessarily is meant to be this like, oh, I, I want Wedge to have a big character arc. I don't think that's ever going to happen. But, you know, Sabine got a chance to show off the whole idea of her knowing Imperial stuff because she used to go to the Academy. And next episode, Hera's Heroes and, you know, like more or less one of the introductions of like Thrawn. Uh, you know, as a Hera episode, it was fine. But again, I think she is one of the characters who suffers the most in this show from just never having any sense of a like continuous arc she is just the main character that connects the rebels to uh, our, our ghost crew to the rebellion and that's about it they bring up arc you know arcs with you know her father her people but never necessarily her herself the the focus of her arc is never necessarily on her she had nice moments as the season went on with her very much defending Chopper within the double Asian droid episode, and that was nice to see. And in the Hera's Hero episode, you know, referencing the fact that, you know, her past means a lot to her and stuff like that. So, you know, fine. The last battle I remember being a, you know, fun, enjoyable episode, but again, not necessarily what the show needs. The show needs proper character arcs, and so the last battle is just an episode. Imperial Super Commandos kind of starting the hint of Mandalorian stuff within the season. You know, I think it was a fun episode. Sabine, this was, I think, the episode that you got an idea that they're actually going to do something with Sabine this season. And it was somewhat interesting. Iron Squadron, I remember being, you know, a somewhat enjoyable episode again. But, like, why didn't they have these characters return or reference them in relation to the finale at all, given that Sato... Uh, you know, sacrificed himself during the final battle. Maybe we'll get a bit on the on those characters in the next season, but it was just a bit frustrating. The Wakanthu job, I remember being really, really not happy with that episode. Um, this obviously being the, I think, the main Hondo episode of the season. I just, I thought it was the most throwaway appearance of Hondo yet, and I don't remember enjoying that episode really much at all. And Inside Man was it was our first kind of introduction to Thrawn, like. And kind of what he's actually going to do. Before this, he'd only been doing like little cameos at the end of episodes, making a decision here and there. This was the first time like this guy knows his stuff. He's he's extremely clever. He is going to find out what's going on with the rebels, and I, I thought that was a fun episode. If if again, it maybe wasn't the most important one. Mid season finale, uh, Vision and Voices was you know solid episode, but again, I think reflecting on it, the mall stuff with Ezra was never that great like it introduced the Darksaber back into things which was cool but it just wasn't the most you know amazing episode again it set up the whole idea of like everyone was like Obi-Wan Maul that's what I want but we obviously saw how that went uh, another two-parter in Ghost of Geonosis was as I said you know a nice tie-in to Rogue One with uh, Saul Gerrera but Ultimately, two, a, an episode that just... Two episodes that didn't need to be two episodes. Not enough happened in these two to justify it being two episodes. Especially when you only had Vision and Voices, which was an actual good episode, be one episode. And then you had how short um, the, the, the Twin Suns episode was, only be one episode. So I think they really mishandled a decent amount of stuff this season. Just with regards to the, the timing out of everything. And next was Warhead, which was actually, you know, for looking on the outset to be just a completely throwaway episode was at least enjoyable in terms of like Thrawn at the end learning about the Rebels positioning a little bit more. Uh, Trials of the Darksaber, one of the best episodes of the season. I I almost would say the best episode of the season. I think delving into Sabine's backstory and actually making us care about her as a character, properly developing you know lightsaber combat within the series, you know giving 
Kanan a chance, ha her having like a nice scene with Ezra, and I, most importantly, Sabine herself as a character. This, I, I really kind of got behind this episode and like, yes, I am behind Sabine as a character now because they're doing something with her. She's one of the only characters this season I felt actually like is different now at the end and we know more about her compared to like everyone else. Um, so I, I definitely will respect the show for doing that. Legacy of Mandalore, again, solid episode if not if it maybe wasn't the most amazing payoff for the previous episode, but I think it's definitely setting up that season four is going to have some stuff with Mandalorians to explain perhaps why they weren't really involved in like A New Hope or anything like that. So something's going to happen here and, you know, Sabine, where they go with regards to her giving the Darksaber to the person that she actually thinks will lead the Mandalorians. Um, it's going to be interesting. Through Imperial Eyes, Callus, I think, this was he was the other character I think come the second half of the season and I think most of the season as well I got behind him as the the spy behind things that like he was he became fulcrum and the reveal about that and how you cared about him and if he would get found out or not I I thought that was actually really really well done and deserves credit because he was a character in like the first season like until that episode with Zeb in season two, I didn't care about all that much, but they really made me care about him. And I hope they have something for him in the next season now that he's part of the Rebel crew. I hope they really do commit to doing something with him. I'd love to see him now interact like on operations as part of the Rebel Alliance like with Zeb and you can develop their friendship further. You can have a, an interesting dynamic between like Kanan and um, Callus. Uh, Ezra and Callus and, and so on see him interact with Chopper even like there's so much potential now that Callus is on the other side because they actually made him feel important uh, Secret Cargo was you know fine Mon Mothma episode introducing her nothing massively notable Double Agent Droid surprisingly enjoyable wasn't expecting much from the episode but really that's all there was to it um, Twin Sons I think it is a good episode I'm not going to say it's bad or anything like that, but I like the character stuff and the ultimate, like, takeaways from the episode in the sense of um, the Ezra-Kenobi scene, what Maul and Kenobi said to each other, and the the fact that Maul was killed in the episode. I respect that. I remain, you know, steadfast with my criticism of the length of the fight, and I really think they mishandled that. They made a bad choice with regards to the length. And to me, it's really felt like even the creators themselves have been really trying to defend that fight against criticism and I think haven't necessarily been doing it all that well. I don't think the stuff that they've said has been really strong enough to like really get you behind the idea of like, yeah, yeah, the fight, the, the fight, this fight we've been waiting so long for, that's really important. Yeah, yeah, it needed to only be like three seconds long. So the main criticism I have with, the, with that episode is far far too much of that episode was about Ezra in that come a couple of months from now what are we going to remember twin sons for we're going to remember it for Maul Kenobi and nothing else Ezra's involvement in this episode I don't think will be almost referenced like uh, in terms of people remembering it really is not going to be a memorable thing at all and then the finale I thought was good but it almost felt like there wasn't that much build up to it. It just kind of felt like, okay, they they really, really heavily wrote and developed an attack, but that's all it felt like. It just felt like one engagement between the rebels and the empire, and maybe that was meant to be the case in that like this is the first you know big scale engagement between the empire and the rebellion, and that it was meant to kind of highlight that basically the three seasons that we've had so far. I've been building up to the point where the rebels are strong enough to at least be somewhat like a threat against the Empire. But um, the biggest problem I think I'd have with the finale is just that I don't think it's set up enough for the next season. And then that that's the season. So the, the issues are again, like going into next season, what's Ezra's arc? I don't know. What's Kanan's arc? I don't know. Hera? Um... Sabine, okay, she has an arc with still, you know, finding out who to give the Darksaber to, how she comes to do that, and so on. Um, so I think ultimately that will lead to a, a probably 
her giving it to Sabine's sister, who we met, I think, in, in the Clone Wars. Uh, most people are speculating that that's going to be what that's about. So maybe the Rebel crew, the some of the Ghost crew, will join Sabine in helping the Mandalorians to repay the fact that the Mandalorians helped them in the final battle. But other than that, like, what are we necessarily doing here? Is someone going to get a promotion to replace Sato? Or are we going to, like, introduce Akbar a little bit more heavily into the series uh, to bring more of the Commander stuff into play? Um, but as I said, other than that, like, I think, you know, Zeb doesn't necessarily have a lot going on. Callus, it's going to be fun to see him adapt to being part of the Rebellion, but I doubt, like, it's going to be, like, huge, like, a huge arc that's going to take up a bunch of episodes with that. So the question really becomes, like, what is the plot? When we end Rebels, when Rebels ends at, I assume, the end of Season 4, what is the end goal of this series going to be? Is it just that the Rebellion is now big enough to the point where A New Hope can happen? Is it meant to be just this story of this crew who allowed a lot of this stuff to happen? Um, or what? Um, that's what this show is missing. It's missing this ultimate kind of overall identity of like what it was trying to accomplish beyond just the grand scheme the rebel alliance grows bigger type situation them as characters i think have very much suffered and i don't know what they're going to do to remedy that and i don't see them making big enough changes to make it so that a lot of these criticisms will just go away going forward so uh, overall like if i had to rate this season i'd probably give it about a seven out of ten in that some of the episodes were eights and nines but a lot of them were just, you know, really average sixes. And so on average, you know, seven, I think, is fair enough for what this, this this season is. Like, I don't think there's a lot of these episodes just are not memorable enough to, for me to warrant going back to them. The only episodes I'd probably like actively really want to go back and rewatch would be uh, Twin Suns um, maybe Through Imperial Eyes, uh, Trials of the Darksaber. Um, vision and voices um, and the opening you know two three episodes like that's maybe like six seven out of the entire season that I think are like important episodes and I think that tells the whole story so that's been my overall thoughts on rebel season three in the comments let me know what your thoughts were on season three overall do you agree with me and that it was fairly average or do you think there was more to it um, and again speculations on season four we'll discuss in the comments as well but that's been the video. Thanks for watching and bye.